covering the week's top tech stories with a slight Linux bias. Attackers behind one of the world's most more destructive pieces of ransomware have found a new way to defeat defenses that might otherwise prevent the attack from encrypt encrypting data. Installing a buggy driver first and then hacking it to burrow deeper into the targeted computer. The ransomware in this case is Robinhood, known for taking down the city of Baltimore networks and systems in Greenville, North Carolina. Robinhood can easily encrypt sensitive files once a vulnerability has allowed the malware to gain a toehold. For networks that are better fortified, the ransomware has a harder time breaking in. Now, Robinhood has found a way to defeat these defenses. In two recent attacks, researchers from security firm Sophos said the ransomware has used its access to a targeted machine to install a driver from Taiwan-based motherboard manufacturer Gigabyte that has a known vulnerability in it. It's the same vulnerability that led to Gigabyte officials discontinuing the use of the driver. But since it contains Gigabyte's cryptographic signature, the Windows operating system trusts it and allows it, to, it allows it to run in the highly sensitive Windows kernel region of the OS without question. With the benign but buggy driver installed, Robinhood then exploited the vulnerability to gain the ability to read and write to virtually any memory region chosen by the attacker. The Robinhood exploit changed a single byte to disable the Windows requirement that drivers be signed. With that, Robinhood installed its own unsigned driver that used its highly privileged kernel access to kill processes and files belonging to endpoint security products. The advanced status of the driver gave it greater ability than other techniques to ensure that the targeted processes are permanently stopped. There are other Windows trusted drivers with known vulnerabilities that could be used in the same way of Gigabyte's drivers. These include signed drivers from VirtualBox, Novel, CPU-Z, and Asus. And while the Gigabyte driver may be the first known instance of this type of hack, it, is, it very well may not be the last and points to a need for Microsoft to reassess the way their certificate revocation procedures. Mm. That's tough. Because mm -hmm. uh, the part of me wants to say, oh, we'll just rev revoke the certificate anytime there's an exploit. But remember that then that would nullify everybody's drivers. Right. Mm -hmm. So this is almost, I mean, as I'm hearing it, this is like a new wave of Trojan attack, so to speak. Yes. That's what it feels like. Right. Like you're coming in through trusted uh, yeah trusted source to get access is that not the basic principle behind it or is it a, a whole different way of doing just it? feels like so they're using it as an elevated privilege tactic mm -hmm. so they're using uh, a a driver that windows trusts because of the signature being valid so it's not a fake driver it's not like a malware it is a legitimate driver but it has a bug in it Mm -hmm. that caused it to be recalled, basically. But the Windows operating system, no matter what version you're running, still trusts the installer for that driver because of the certificate that is applied to it. And so the hackers are using that to then be able to elevate their privileges and do whatever the heck they want. Right. And that's the scary thing, because how do you stop that? How can you possibly stop that? I think it comes down to where's your first line of defense? I think the only thing you have to, that you can look at is how did they get in in the first place? Mm -hmm. Was mm -hmm. it a phishing scam? Was it somebody clicked on an email that had some fileless malware that allowed somebody to run something resident in their computer? Is it that you have remote desktop turned on on one of your computers on your network? And that's really easy to hack. Now, I don't know how certificates work just because I, I haven't delved into that, mm -hmm. but does each certificate and each driver have its own like certificate identifier? No, the driver doesn't have its own certificate, but the company that manufactures the driver does. So that certificate says yes to Microsoft. This is a gigabyte driver. 
provided by Gigabyte because it contains the certificate that proves that this is a legitimate driver from Gigabyte. So what if the certificate system changed in such a way that you have your your main certificate, say, for Gigabyte, but then you have your sub-certificates for each driver rollout so that it identifies this driver as this subset? Yeah. Would as, that as help a, identify the As issue? a developer, I feel like that's... You're you're giving me nightmares right now, Jeff. Oh, okay, fair enough. <laughs> I'm just trying to think outside the box. Like, I like where you're going, but it, it just sounds like a logistical nightmare as far as managing those certificates. Like, it could just be a nightmare. I think maybe um, some kind of an heuristic analysis that is able to identify... Maybe it's a checksum that identifies known faulty drivers or deprecated drivers so that Windows could say, yes, this is a valid certificate. However, Gigabyte has marked this certificate or this installer as bad. <sighs> it's got to be some kind of an, an identifier. Yeah, it's well, it'll be interesting. Yeah, do that. Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and That's the answer.